Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I know y'all clapping and everything like that. It's real hard to be excited for every episode, but I am excited and everything like that. Yep. No. Okay. Oh, man. Come on in. Yeah, y'all. Come on in. 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 Before we begin, like, share, subscribe. If you like, leave a comment. If you don't like, leave a constructive comment. Uh, if you know me, grow me and share in this caring. Yeah, I must have said it out of order last time. Uh, recasting and remembering. I think that's appropriate. Recasting is simple, short to the point. Recasting and remembering. Why did I pick that title? You know, there's been a lot of false narrative going on in regards to what happens when you recast a character after an actor has passed away or just recast it in general. Does it diminish the actors who portrayed the role before? Can anyone else play the role better? You know, I'm, I'm you know, I don't. I know this might sound kind of harsh and everything like that because I'm of the mindset that most of the people that don't know anything about recasting haven't really lived long enough, to be perfectly honest with you, to have an opinion. And when I say that, it's because you haven't experienced recasting. I dare say you really didn't care too much about the character as much as you cared about the actor or actress that portrayed the character. Thus, your attachment to the person who played the role as opposed to the role itself. There's nothing wrong with that. You just need to admit it. George Reeves. No portrayal since his portrayal of Superman can never make me forget him. I grew up watching that dude, black and white and in color, as Clark Kent, Superman. Uh, I remember the cat that played Jimmy Olsen, and I still remember Lois Lane. And I'm gonna be honest with you, while I cannot remember their names, Jimmy Olsen was a strawberry blonde, Lois Lane was a brunette. Slender Bill's sister. Well, I call her sister, light skinned sister, but you, you know what I mean. The dark-skinned brother that played Jimmy Olsen on Supergirl didn't make me forget him. And it didn't devalue his portrayal of Jimmy Olsen. Actually, he played a pretty good comic book accurate Jimmy Olsen. I think he had the watch and everything like that. And some of y'all don't even know about the Signal Watch. You may or may not. I don't know. But the meaning recastings of Jimmy Olsen didn't make me forget who I saw play him first. That's the narrative that's kind of been spent out there. DC kept a character like Jimmy Olsen going because they understand the significance of Jimmy Olsen to not only the Superman mythology, but hell to the Supergirl mythology. Adam West was my Batman. And it was kind of silly then, and I ain't gonna lie. I, even then as a kid, I was like, this is silly as hell. <laughs> I didn't say Silly as hell, because I didn't cuss back then. You know, play that back then, man. Please. Um, but it was silly. And even with casting back then, I'm a kid. I was born in 68. I knew Bruce Lee easily should have beat Bruce, Dick Grayson's ass. I was, <laughs> I was like, man, y'all not, y'all, no, y'all not gonna convince me that Cato, that 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 Robin, the boy wonder, is going. Toe to toe with Cato, who's a grown man. Don't get it twisted. Just cause Cato was, you know, driving the vehicle and Green Hornet was the, you know, the, the, the marquee hero. Green Hornet not throwing hands with Cato. <laughs> Especially when you think the fact that Cato was actually played by Bruce Lee. Now watch this. See how I said that? They redid Green Hornet. The actor that played Cato, he didn't do a bad job, but he wasn't Bruce Lee. Who forgot that Bruce Lee played the role of Cato? That's my age. Now, watch this. He was probably the best thing in that damn movie because that script sucked like... <laughs> 
Y'all pretty should have gave that damn thing to Ke to Kevin Smith and let Kevin Smith had did that damn thing. Cause that 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 Green Hornet, Seth Rogen, you turned a damn superhero into a comedic vehicle. You lost weight for the role, which is admirable. But the Green Hornet is not a joke. And you made it funny. Disrespected the source material for your own personal gain. Flopped at the box office. It didn't do well. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. Nevertheless, Seth Rogen didn't make me forget the actor that played Green Hornet before him. And that guy actually played Green Hornet pretty damn good. He played it straight up to the, the, the source material, which is what we be looking for. We be looking for whoever plays the role to embody the spirit of the character, not put their own damn personal twist on it. If that was the case, as D. Steasel said and Mr. Smith said in the previous video, you should have just made your own damn character in Joe Boo. I swear to God. Y'all keep defending this damn dude, and I still got to think about in Joe Boo. I swear to God. Every time I think about the fact that he basically kicked Sion to the side just to justify his homeboy having a sympathetic arc, I get mad as hell. I ain't lying, bro. I swear on everything. Like, y'all need to know that touched me to my spirit because I'm looking at you like, that was deliberate as hell. That was deliberate as F, bro. You, ooh, bro. You you did that, bro. And that's why everybody got a jacked up ass opinion about T'Challa because of that, that damn thing you did right there. And Joe Boo, bro, and then you made T'Chaka dishonorable as by killing his own damn brother. Oh, man. Yeah, your spin, your vision. I give two dams about your vision, bro. Like, on everything, I'm hot about that one. I'm hot about that one. Because that jacked up ass thing that you did is why everybody got an effed up view of T'Challa, T'Chaka, and the whole damn family. Boy, ooh, mm -mm. I'm, I'm going to come, come, come back. I'm going to come back. Recast and remember it. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I ain't going to do that. Nicholas Hammond, he of the one web shooter, Spider-Man. He showed up on CBS. Nobody made me forget that Nicholas Hammond, I might not have remembered his name, but nobody made me, would have made me remember, would have made me forget that that was the first Spider-Man I sent. Now, you know what? I can't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like feel what you mean? Electric company. Electric company. We saw a lot. Come on, man. Yo, you, come on. <laughs> we saw Spider-Man on, on, on Electric Company way before we saw Spider-Man on CBS. <laughs> Damn it, man. <laughs> he just never he just never took off his costume. <laughs> It was the same place we saw Morgan Freeman first, too. Yeah, y'all think y'all. Nah, Morgan Freeman. Ooh, lean on me? Hell no. Nah. Electric Company. <laughs> Damn, I'm telling my age. <laughs> oh, man, listen. What's the point of the video? Man. Stop it. The same guy that played The Flash on Earth 2. In the CW is the same dude that played the Flash on CBS. It used to be a soap opera star. I never forgot him. Hell, actually, I compare his bill to Grant Gustin's bill because they actually you because he he was a workout holic <laughs> back in the day. My dog was jacked up. They actually molded the costume based on how he was built. <laughs> so I'm looking at him and Grant Gustin. I'm like, you know, you can. You know, ain't nothing wrong with it, bro. You know, I know you comfortable with you, but you're playing a superhero. You know, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, getting in the gym, getting a little swole on. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing, you know, rip, holding shirt on, sit back. Oh, my. Man, hey, I, you know. But, you know, when you say that, you get accused of body shaming somebody. <laughs> but I didn't forget him. I didn't forget Linda Carter played Wonder Woman. Hell, I didn't forget Catherine Bach was the first Daisy Duke. And as far as I'm concerned, Catherine Bach was the best Daisy Duke by far. Dukes of Hazzard. Yeah. You don't forget him. I can honestly tell you, if you talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents. 
I can honestly tell you with absolute certainty that recasting T'Challa will not have you forgetting Chadwick Boseman. Will you compare the two actors? Yeah. And will you form your own opinion? Yeah. But if that actor brings it, and that's all you're asking for, is that they bring it, you won't be disappointed. As a matter of fact, that actor, although they might not be the actor that Chadwick Boseman is, I did say he is. The fact that they go out there and they give it they all, that is the spirit, the embodiment of Chadwick Boseman. That's all you can ask for. And if they go out there and they give that role, they all, the heart and soul into it, the same way Chadwick would have. That's honoring him. Nobody's asking them to do it like he did it. Number one. Give somebody else a chance to do it. And trust me when I tell you. You won't forget the fact that Chadwick played the role. If anything, it'll make you think about him even more. Because that's just how it goes. When you see somebody else play the role, you think about the actor who played it before in your lifetime. And that's what it is. You haven't seen enough recasts in your lifetime to appreciate it, to understand it. And see if what it really is. It's a carrying on of the legacy of the actor and those that come after them. I ain't saying I'm just saying. Peace.